What's cracking everyone, Titanic Llama here, and just as I did with World 2, I plan on quickly going over exactly what I was focusing on as I progressed through World 3 in this video, so let's get right into it shall we? As mentioned in Episode 4, I planned on getting through World 3 pretty quickly, as I had always planned to slow right down in World 4 to focus on catching up the skills from previous worlds while getting the World 4 skills rolling. With that in mind, upon opening up World 3, I threw some food on my Barbarian and set him up on the Sheepies map to farm out a little bit of cash so I could start buying the World 3 Armor Stones. Whilst doing that, I farmed out Amarok on another character to restock the materials I needed to make another set of Amarok Armor. Once that was done, with maxed out Hemoglobin, HP Talents and eventually the HP Shrine, I had 100% survivability for the first half of World 3. So I left my Barbarian to open those portals normally, which took me about a week. I wanted to take the start of World 3 a bit slower to give myself time to catch up, mainly Stamps and Alchemy levels, focusing on increasing Defense and Accuracy mainly. Doing this greatly reduced the amount of candy it would take me to push through the last half of World 3. But what about everyone else? As always, my squire was mining and had progressed to mining platinum, though gains were a bit lacklustre, so I grabbed the Amarok armor I had just replaced on my Barbarian from World 2 and handed it down to my squire. I started to push him through World 2 to level him up until I had enough talent points to max out all of my mining related talents. Once this was done, he got thrown straight back on Platinum, only switching to Dimentia just before I started to push to the boss map as I had collected enough Platinum to make all of the tools that I wanted. Keep in mind, I also had access to the 3D printer now, so I had taken samples of both copper and iron to continue to produce both of those. The copper was to continue to increase my mining efficiency through this talent here, and to run the refinery, while the iron was purely for bubbles and stamps. My wizard was rotating back and forth between gigafrogs and sandy pots to stockpile the materials needed for the refinery. I had also taken oak, bleach and forest fibre prints on this guy to level up bubbles and alchemy. Alchemy? Friggin' alchemy. Good take, Llama. My shaman, on the other hand, who had been stuck on chopping the whole time I was in World 2, finally got his first real set of combat armor and leveled up to the point where I could max all of his chopping talents, similar to my squire. This also gave me a lot more talents to pour into the alchemy talents in the shaman tab, but not enough to max them all. Once I was happy with his level and talent points, he got thrown back onto chopping, but not so much for the logs. I was more focusing on leveling up the cards related to the logs to increase my efficiency overall. And again, I wanted to keep my shaman in his skilling spec as much as possible for the boost to alchemy speeds. Prince wise, I had this guy swapping between oak, troppy and tundra logs as I required. My bowman, I barely touched through world 3, as he had decent enough levels from pushing through to the fruit flies map. So I switched my focus to leveling up all of my catching cards to at least 2 stars. Once that was done, he got thrown straight back onto fruit flies to continue to level up FMJ. On this guy, I was printing flies for the refinery, and also butterflies so I could keep a healthy stock of the catching boost food on this guy, only switching from butterflies to fruit flies once I had a decent enough print. My hunter farmed nothing but green mushrooms the whole time I was in World 3. He was printing green mushroom caps and farming them AFK. I think by the time I had finished World 3, I was already well over 2 million green mushrooms killed, which is a lot for this point of the game. This again was purely to keep my refinery running, and it also made it super easy just to walk back into World 1, switch to my skilling spec, collect my traps, deposit them, and go straight back to the G mushroom farm. As I joked about in the last one of these videos, my second barbarian has not moved from the very same fishing spot I spoke about in that video. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go and check out how I tackled World 2. The link will be up in the top corner now. After the first week, I had unlocked and leveled up both the Frozen and Boulder Roller Towers. So I went and unlocked both Skilled Dimwit from Globlin Gorefest and the Tashion of Titans from Waka Waka War. Skilled Dimwit is huge for skilling gains and Tashion I wanted so I could finish off the Cheezor quests to unlock my daily keys. All in all, my account was pretty stagnant for nearly two weeks just collecting my AFK gains, leveling up my stamps and alchemy while I waited for my barbarian to hit the mammoth map. Once there, I grabbed my stockpile of candies and a heap of stacks of food and blasted my way through to the Cheezor map. This did take quite a few candies, but with the two events that we've had during this playthrough and the level up gift popping off because of Sheepy, I had more than enough and was left with a decent stock of candies once I had gotten to the cheese or map for later use. Other than that, World 3 was a fairly uneventful world. As stated in the World 3 video, I spent 45 minutes killing Cheezor and left World 3 in my wake. 
Hopefully this gives you some guidance on what to work on or towards, but again, I didn't really spend much time here, so I'm not going to try and conjure content where there is none. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this up here and get a start on the World 4 video. But a quick note from me, this will most likely be my last upload for the year, so I just wanted to take a second to wish everyone a happy and safe holidays, and I just wanted to say thank you for all of the support that you guys have shown me so far. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the new year. Like, sub, drop a comment, all of that good shit, you know the drill. But with that being said, I've been Titanic Llama, you've been watching a video, and I'm out. Peace. Oh yeah, by the way, if anyone's still here listening to me ran, I've made a Patreon, so if you want to go above and beyond with your support for myself and this channel, go and check it out.